What I want to do in this video is to kind of show you how I've got a, a real project laid out inside of Objective C or Xcode and some of the things that I've run into that, that you might want to know. Uh, the first thing is this project, when it first got started, the, we didn't really understand exactly what was going on with Xcode. And through the, the process of testing and creating and, and going back and forth, we ended up with a directory structure on the hard drive that was not exactly what we were wanting. Um, just, just to kind of give you an, an idea, if I switch over here, this is the actual directory. And what we ended up with is we had a uh, Lizzie iPhone and then we had another folder inside of there called Lizzie iPhone. And some of the application or some of the Xcode was in the subfolder. Some of it was in the main folder. And it was just, it was a mess trying to figure out where everything was and what was going on. So after the project got started, I decided that I, I wanted to, to go back and reorganize things. But unfortunately, in Xcode, it's not really that easy to do. So what I want to do in this video is kind of show you some of the things that I ran into and, and how I worked around them. I don't know if this is the, the best way to go about doing it, but it did work and, and the project is up and running again. So the first thing is to take a look over here at Xcode itself and the fact that we have these folders over here that we've created. Now, originally we had, for example, all the icon images were just out here in the main directory structure. There was no folders. So to create a folder inside of a project, just to organize code, all you have to do is come select the project, right click, and tell it to create a new group. And that will actually go out and create a, a new folder underneath this uh, project. Now, the one thing to understand about this, though, is that this group that you're creating has absolutely no correspondence to the actual directory that everything is stored in. So my first problem was it's very easy to come in here and organize the project. But if I switch over here and take a look at my directory structure, I still had the subfolders. I still, for example, the, the Xcode project itself was still stored here in this folder, but my... Uh, PCH file and my ENL proj file or directory were in another folder. So they were actually separated from the main project file. So it was, it was really kind of nasty the way everything was laid out. So just understand that on the surface, getting everything to, to get organized inside of Xcode is very simple. Just understand that that's not doing the same thing as the actual directory structure itself. Now, if I were to add another file to the icons folder, for example, and I want to bring it in to, to add it to this, um, I actually come over, right click on that folder and tell it to add files and then select the new image file that I've put out there on the hard drive and it'll bring in the, the image file. Now, I, Xcode has the ability to keep everything, actually it does, keep everything in its original location. You do have the ability to tell it to copy things locally, um, but that kind of could get nasty too. So you just need to understand that wherever the project is and whatever directory structures you set up, if you've got more than one developer working on this project, they're all going to have to have that same tree or that, that same system of files that you're working with. So I like to actually come over and and keep that stuff organized within the project folder itself. So what I did is I came in and first created a bunch of folders that I wanted to organize the, the different section of the application in, and then I moved all of the corresponding .h and .m files into those folders. Now, when I did that, inside of Xcode, these guys would turn red because they were no longer found in their old location. So what I did to fix that is exactly what I just showed you on the icons. I came in, told it to add files. It would add the new the, the files from the existing folder where I had moved things, and then I just deleted by clicking on the two red lines. I would click on it, hit the delete button, and delete those off of the out of the project and that would fix that so moving the files themselves and getting them into the into the subfolders was actually quite easy it wasn't that big of a deal move them delete them out of here and then add them back in to it at their new location 
The problem, however, came in when I started trying to deal with specifically with this PCH file, which was in a subdirectory, and this ENLproj folder, which was also in a subdirectory. Now, in the course of trying to figure this out, I actually learned a few things that, that we'll kind of cover here. If we view I, VI this um, iPhone uh, prefix file that we have here, this file, I'm not totally sure what what is uh, what it's used for, but it's not containing any information relative to the actual project as far as locations and everything go. So moving it over to this folder wasn't that big of a deal. But inside of the Xcode proj folder, which we'll go in in just a second, um, that's where things got a little nasty because once I did that, I couldn't compile the project anymore. Um, the first thing I want to do, though, is look inside this EN folder to show you that inside of here is where your main storyboard and your info plist.strings files are. So this is the, the main, and I'll just VI the storyboard. Um, this is just a, an XML file that, that uh, Xcode uses to keep up with all of the different things, all of the connections that you have in the project. Um, what what is connected to what, what the labels are, and, and so forth that you've got inside of the, the storyboard. Now, the and, and again, your your strings file is where you hold your global strings and things that you want to have for, for language and, and that kind of stuff. Now, if we go back over here and CD into the Lizzie uh, Xcode project or folder, this is the main spot in this project file is the one that we want to actually look at. And to be specific, this is where all of the different things have their paths set to them, all the different files, the .h, .m, images, all that kind of stuff. Now you'll notice that this first section up here just kind of points out all the objects that you have inside of the application. But when we get down here to this, this second section, we actually have the path to these particular files. So as we go across here, you get to a path declaration and it'll tell you exactly where it's at. Now, the first thing is the, the path to um, the, the actual application. And then we've got our UI kit and, and other stuff. But the, the main thing that I want to look at here is when we hit this info P list, um, it actually, the path is okay, but you'll notice the source tree over here says group. Now, when I move that file it, well, actually, that file was already in the right directory, so I didn't have a problem with it. But this is uh, the eng or the en.lproj folder, and here's our info plist.strings file. Now, originally, this source tree said the same thing as this. It said group. The problem is, is that the system, when it would go to open that file, couldn't find it. It wasn't actually in the group folder. It was in another folder called source underscore root. So what I ended up doing is all of the main project fold files that I had to move, I had to come in here and change these guys from saying group to actually saying source underscore root. So I changed the, the source tree on, on some of these guys to make them actually say source underscore root. And that allowed it to, to be able to find those files when it opened up the project and everything started working again. So again, inside of this xproj uh, folder, or the Xcode proj folder, um, this project.pbx proj is the file that, that we're actually looking at. And that was the, the only file that really that I had to change to, to get things working again. Um, the only other thing I have to remember here, I think there was one more I had to change those files. Oh, and, and when I went through, because of the fact that I had those two subfolders, there were some other files in here, and, and I would just suggest searching for whatever the subfolder is you're trying to eliminate to make sure that it's not in here because some of these files that we had that were in those subfolders uh, had to change the paths on them down here to actually give it, you know, like this, for example, originally had, uh, you know, maybe a path in front of it where it had the subfolder in it. And I had to delete the subfolder out of some of these. There were only four or five different places that I had to do that to, to get things working again. But the, the big point is 
just to understand that the folders that you're creating over here, what they call groups inside of Xcode, do not correlate to the actual directory structure. And if you're wanting to keep the directory structure clean and, and organized so that it reflects what you have inside of Xcode, which I personally highly recommend, um, you, you need to understand exactly what's going on and make sure that you're creating things and putting them in the right spots. Um, again, if you want to put all of your code in one folder and use Xcode to organize everything, that's perfectly okay as well. Um, I just personally like to have my, my files grouped by the section that they're related to so that everything stays clean both at the directory level and inside of Xcode.